Hello, my name is Teacher Bell and welcome to another tips, review, and tutorial. So for today, we are going to be discussing how to manage your classroom. These are the things that you can do in the first two weeks or one week at least in your classroom instruction. So let's start. You might be here now because somehow you have experience or are experiencing some struggles in your classroom management. These are some of the basic routines and procedures that uh, I have put in place in my classroom. I am handling third grade. Join me as we learn and grow today. So for the call and response, I'm pretty sure most of you already use this. The rhythm clap, motivational chants. We have the calm corner, the hand signals, and counselor walls. I'm going to give you some specific examples of these procedures. Before you set these routines in your classroom, make sure that they know that it's, it's like them versus the rules, not them versus you, so that the rapport building will not be compromised. Okay, so let's start with the first one, the call and response. So call and response is very important in classroom management because it activates students' brain by giving a cue to stop what they are doing and start listening. Okay, the very basic is one, two, three, eyes on me. And the students will say one, two, eyes on you. Now there's also the club once, club twice, and then the students will just follow it. Now, here's another one. If you can hear me touch your nose or you can use any other parts of the body or anything that they can do around the classroom. Like if you can hear me put your hands on your lap, those things, and the students will act them out. Now, this one, the five, four, three, two, one, now we're done, is the student response. I use this um, when we do tasks. Like for example, when they are almost done, I'm going to ask them first, how many more minutes do you need? If they say five minutes or if I say you need only uh, or we only have five more minutes remaining. At the end of that five minutes, I'm going to say five, four, three, two, one. And the students will say now we're done. This one, I learned this from my professor in college. Um, when you say teach, teach, your students will say OK, OK or vice versa. You can also say, okay, okay, and they say, teach, teach. So it's just something that catches the student's attention. It's like a, an attention grabber or attention getter. Now here's the common one, class, class, yes, yes, or vice versa. You can also say, yes, yes, and the students will say, class, class. Or you can also change the, the tone of your voice. You can mimic um, characters. You can change the pitch. You can say class, class, yes, yes, or you can say yes, yes, class, class, like that. And um, hocus pocus, time to focus. You can also put actions to it like hocus pocus, time to focus. Water, water, this is something I learned from one of the research I'm doing. Um, you say, no, water, 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 the students will follow it, water, 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 and when you say ice, they're gonna freeze, the students will freeze. So water, 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 ice, or you can say water, 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 freeze. Um, holy moly, guacamole is something that's common to us teachers. Okay. Next is the rhythm clap. So clapping provides an equally noticeable but far more positive way to get students' attention. Remember, our goal is to get their attention without shouting, without losing our voice because we teach every single day, five days a week. So rhythm clap, you can design your own, but the most common is and then the students will copy it. And then you can do other um, patterns that might fit your class. Or you can also ask the students to um, come up with a pattern for the class. 
Now, the motivational chant, this is something that I do as a morning routine. So usually chants done consistently promote a respectful mindset and it establish a high expectation towards um, the student's behavior and their self-worth. I found a very good video on this one from YouTube. I'm going to share the link below. You can also access that. But let me show you an example of my classroom doing the chant. I welcome change. I welcome change. I welcome challenges. I welcome challenges. Challenges help me grow. Challenges help me grow. I am worthy of your love. I am worthy of your love. I am worthy. Okay, next we have the calm corner. Calm corners are important social, emotional learning, SEL environments. This is my calm corner in my classroom. I put it just beside the reading corner because some of my students also use books to calm themselves. Just remember that the calm space should be a safe space for them. Okay. Now, these are some of the materials that I use. I have this big timer. This is a 10-minute timer. They use this to time themselves. So it's just a maximum of 10 minutes. And I have some stress balls, um, fidget spinners, and all those that may calm yourself. So once they go to the calm corner, they set the timer. But um, this is where the confusion comes in. When do students go to the calm corner? For my classroom, it could be voluntary or teacher directed. So sometimes when students feel overwhelmed, especially when they have um, anger issues or they are generally not feeling comfortable at the moment, I allow them to raise their hands. And when they go to the calm space, they get to fill out the think sheet form. So it looks like this. This is just very basic. You can devise your own. When students go to the calm space, they become accountable of their behaviors. And once they fill this out, now their parents has to affix their signature as well. So they cannot just ask and go to the calm corner anytime because there's a consequence to it. And there are also suggestions here that they can do or ideas the next time they are in the in that same situation so that's it i'm gonna put also the link of this one below if you want to use this in your class okay now after filling out that think sheet form then they get to choose the materials that will calm them down and at the end of the 10 minute timer they are expected to go back to their seat join the class and positively engage with the discussion. So that is the expectation we set. Now, if they cannot do this one, then they are not allowed to use the calm space because again, it is a privilege. Now, um, in order to remove the connotation that when you go to the calm space, you have been off task. So one thing that I also do during recess or during lunchtime is I pick three of my students who have been behaving really well and they get to have 10 minutes in the calm space. So that way, those who are misbehaving or not misbehaving, they equally get the chance to experience our, our calm space. Okay, next we have the hand signals. This lessens uh, interruptions in the classroom because uh, it serves as an extension of the cognitive system. Therefore, students can easily manage uh, the flow of transition inside the classroom. And uh, um, in turn, the teacher also get to have what I call the silent interruptions. So instead of uh, students raising their hands and asking to go out to the restroom, they can just use hand signals. So we do this for, may I go out? I added some like for this one, if they need tissue paper, 
Now, I agree is something that we use during discussions. I have, oh no, um, the tissue is this one too. I have a question is this one. So I agree, I have a question and I have a comment. So this way we are also minimizing arguments during class discussions by using hand signals. I am going to put the link also below so you can download it for your classroom. Now, uh, with hand signals, you need to also mention about when they can use it, how will they use it, and how frequent can they use it. So may I go to the bathroom, although it's a silent interruption, but they cannot do it so many times. So you should have set those rules already, like you cannot um, raise your signals during discussions or you can only use the restroom twice in the morning or twice in the afternoon. So it depends on your classroom rules. Okay. Now the last one is the counselor walls. So this is also like uh, motivational quotes posted on your walls. Um, the rationale behind this is you are handing over the control to your students. So instead of you counseling them, they can always refer around your classroom posted on your walls and they'll be able to hopefully um, self-regulate themselves on their own. Now, here are some examples. Teach peace. I also use this when there are arguments inside the classrooms, like uh, when when students are arguing, I'm going to just refer them to the wall. What did we say about argument? We are, we should be advocates of this. Just make sure whatever is posted on the walls, you have gone through it during the first week or it's self-explanatory. Now here are some more examples. Be the change. I really love this posted on my wall. Be the nice kid. It doesn't matter what others tell you. But at the end of the day, always be the nice kid once. Now, this is what I like during testing. I use this during testing because some of our students, they tend to get frustrated. So bring out your magic hands. I don't understand. If you don't understand, what do you tell yourself? What am I missing? Or I give up. We always, uh, we always hear this from our students when they look at this one they'll remember that they need to keep trying so these are small details in our classroom that may contribute to the general discipline um, and classroom management so i hope you have a takeaway from this video and again if you have some suggestions or things that you also use in your classroom classroom and are very effective, please do comment down below. Thank you very much. And for my next video, we're going to talk about how to get students engaged during activities. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.